I feel like Willy Wonka taking you to the chocolate factory of Marvel Rivals because we just got crazy footage of all the abilities. So consider this your ultimate character guide for Marvel Rivals. Hopefully a lot of you have already gotten in. Hopefully a bunch of you can still get in. We've got 14 characters lined up for you today and we are going to check them out and see all of their abilities one by one. I have ordered them from difficult too easy. The characters are all ranked on a five-star system, so we're going to go through the characters, kicking off with Spider-Man, currently the only five-star ranked character in the game. Let me know which character you're most excited to play after seeing these abilities. Let me know which abilities you think look awesome. Hit that like button if you want more Marvel Rivals content, and let's go. Like I said, starting off with Spidey and his spider power. So he can swing his fist forward to strike, dealing extra damage to the enemy with a spider tracer. Get a little uh, clip of all of these here. We get to go and see all of his abilities, which is pretty darn nifty, and all of them in action. Uh, spectacular Spin is to launch web clusters all around to damage and stun enemies. Very nice there. His web swing ability is going to be his movement traversal ability. I think it's interesting that Spider-Man is considered the most difficult character to play as. Get over here, shoot webbing to reel him to hit enemy. If the enemy is tagged with a spider tracer, Spider-Man will get pulled to them instead. And I'm going to pause. That's an interesting note there. Uh, so the Spider Tracer is something that is going to deal more damage with your basic attack. Uh, it is also going to pull you towards them instead of pull them towards you with the Spider Tracer. So that's an important nuance and I guess contributes to the character's difficulty. The Amazing Combo launches an enemy upwards, dealing extra damage again to the enemy with the Spider Tracer. Flip and flip, a double jump. All right, that's nice. Space bar, thank you very much. Uh, web cluster. So you can shoot a cluster of webs that deals damage and attaches a spider tracer to the hit enemy. So this right click is going to be the way that you are going to spider tracer up your enemy. And that's going to be basically like your locked in target, the one that you're going to deal more damage to, the one that you're going to pull yourself towards. So this can be used not only as a, a damaging buff, uh, but it can also be used as a way for, for traversal, for movement. Um, that is really darn nifty and something I super appreciate because Spider-Man's all about movement. Obviously he has his web swing, but the get over here can actually be used as a movement ability as well as a damage ability if you have uh, the Spider Tracer deployed onto that enemy. We've got Spider Sense down here, uh, which is the passive. Give a warning of enemies that have been around. Um, hello. <laughs> he's just he's chilling there. He's hanging out, Spider Sense. Uh, let me go back a little. I, I didn't even really see the... Give a warning of enemies. Can we see him through the wall? Do we know it's him? Maybe there's like a vibration or something. Give a warning of enemies that have been around. Okay. And then wall crawl is press space to crawl on vertical surfaces and press the button on the mouse left button to run on them. They also give you a suggested combo for every character, which I think is really interesting. So they're going to say use web swing to flank, shoot a web cluster to deal damage and attach a spider tracer, close in with get over here, follow up with an amazing combo to detonate the spider tracer and unleash spectacular spin to stun. Like that's really freaking cool. Did we see the amazing combo? Oh yeah, that's the launch enemy upward. Okay, so let's check out this suggested combo. I think this is going to be very nifty. And I love that they're giving us like a little insight into what would be a good series of attacks, okay? So we're going to web swing to flank. All right, web cluster from the air right there. Pull him towards us. Okay, something going on with the server in this footage here. Okay, well, thanks thanks so much. Anyhow, on to the next character, Black Panther. Uh, he's got vibranium claws to slice. He's a four-star difficulty character. And Bast Descent is going to be on his Q key, his first ability. Summon Bast, pouncing forward, dealing damage, and attaching a Vibranium Mark to hit enemies. So we can already see that attaching these different Marks and Tracers is going to be a very important part of some of these early characters. Bast is a sick character in Marvel Snap. Now get to see him in action in Marvel Rivals. Sprint Rend is going to lunge forward and deal damage to enemies. Hitting an enemy afflicted with a Vibranium Mark produces bonus health and refreshes the ability. Okay, so not more damage here. This is going to give you some a boost of health and refresh the ability. Very nice. Okay, that is really sick. I like that a lot. Okay, very, very nice. Uh, we've got the Spinning Kick, which is going to be a pretty basic spiral forward and attach a Vibranium Mark. This is another way to attach the Mark. So you got Bass Descent and Spinning Kick to attach on here. Subtle Step is going to be running on a wall. Uh, and then you get a jump after the wall, so you can kind of turn that into a double jump, I believe. 
Spear Toss is very nifty. Toss a Vibranium Spear forward, creating a Vibranium Force Field, attaching a Vibranium Mark. So Black Panther is all about attaching these Vibranium Marks. It's going to be a way to refresh his abilities. It's going to be a way to get him some health. It's going to be a way to, I'm guessing, also do something with the Cunning here. Let's see. Panther's Cunning. Okay, that just deals higher damage when at low health. And then we got his Jolly Disc, which is his team-up ability. Uh, so low health here. We're going to see him go in and wreak some havoc with that Vibranium Claws. So the Jolly Disc here is going to be his team-up ability with Magic. Magic opens a portal, and then Black Panther can use the portal. I don't know what the disc is there. I guess we're activating the disc to be able to go through the portal. Suggested combo here. Uh, if you notice, Black Panther doesn't have a ton of abilities to move. I mean, he does have uh, the Sprint Rend, but other than that, this is going to kind of be his best way to move is with magic. They're suggested to unleash a Spear Toss and Spinning Kick to attach Vibranium Marks to every enemy in the, the area, strike them with the Sprint Rend to reset your ability cooldowns, and then leverage Subtle Step to swiftly engage or disengage from battles with ease. And Subtle Step was what? The ability to run on a wall, perform a jump after detaching from a wall. Okay, so let's see how this combo plays out here. Okay, so we got the Spear Toss, the Kick, and then we Sprint Rend, and we climb up and away to just disengage and get out of there. Okay, I'd say Black Panther, honestly, for a four-star difficulty, seems pretty simple. Loki has another four-star difficulty character with Mystical Missile, Fire Mystical Missiles, to heal allies or deal damage. I like that. He is a trickster, of course, so he can do a little bit of both, which is nice. Healing and hurting. His God of Mistress ability. Uh, we've actually seen Loki's abilities, but we'll still go over them. Shapeshift into a targeted ally or enemy Your hero and use all of their abilities. So this is nice because it can be used against enemies and allies. I think that's really nifty that they're allowing you to, um, you know, copy your teammates or copy your opponents depending on what you need in the match depending on what's necessary and i guess also depending on what characters you're comfortable with that could kind of help determine who you copy um you're going to get all their abilities so your your everything's going to change your q your left shift your e everything will change um his default left shift though is the regeneration domain after he pops off of Punisher here, use runestones to create a magical field that converts damage taken by allies within its radius into healing energy. Pretty nice, giving us some, some mage abilities here. Um, and then we're going to have Doppelganger, which is going to allow Loki to create a clone of himself, project an illusion, as they call it here, that can cast some of Loki's abilities. Now, that's not very specific, um, but I guess it's going to be able to do a few things kind of autopilot on its own. We also have Devious Exchange, which is going to be Loki's main movement ability here to swap positions with the selected illusion. So pretty good to get in to battle or out of battle. The only kind of like thing I want to mention there about the Devious Exchange is if you're using the Devious Exchange to cast an illusion towards enemies, you're not going to want to swap it. So you're going to need to be careful that your Devious Exchange, if you want to use that as a retreat or a get out of harm's way, you're going to make need to make sure that you're not casting it a aggressively but much more defensively uh we got the backstab which is going to be on v and allow you to pull out a dagger to stab enemies dealing extra damage when attacking from behind now we lo know loki is a low health character and primarily someone from range so this is a dangerous move and that's why they're giving you the extra damage from behind um, it is something that could probably be quickly used with a doppelganger into a devious exchange into a backstab and then maybe another doppelganger and a devious exchange but that seems like it's going to be quite a complicated combo. Deception allows you to become invisible and conjure an illusion to deceive enemies. So maybe that's going to be the combo, right? It's doppelganger, devious exchange, backstab, deception, like literally right down the list. But a lot of very cool moves for Loki, as we already know. His uh, Lefacen Reborn is going to be his passive, uh, which is going to allow Sir Loki uh, to team up with Hela. When she lands a final hit and defeating an enemy, she can instantly resurrect Loki in the respawn phase. If Loki is alive, a Nastron Crow will fly to him, granting blue armor. So Hela and Loki team up. Uh, it's either a quick respawn for Loki when Hela finishes off an enemy. Very nice. Uh, right there. Or if Loki's already alive, then we get a Crow that's going to bring him uh, some extra armor. Now they're going to say Deception and Doppelganger to create illusions, boosting his hit damage and healing, and deploy Regeneration Domain to shield allies and self. God of Mistress can shave ship into an enemy or ally, instantly unleashing their ultimate. Wow, okay. So, I'm interested. Do the doppelgangers, do the illusions, do they stay when he transforms? Okay, so he's casting 
the deception, right? And if we recall, deception is invisible, right? So he's he's going invisible. He conjures up, and then he's going to do a doppelganger to get out the way, or maybe it's doppelganger and then deception, I guess. And then he's going to deal some damage with the regeneration domain, transform into Groot, and use a powerful attack. And yeah, they all stay. Look, so we've got all of our different illusions staying in place and still helping Loki out, which is pretty darn sick. All right, we still have one more four-star character, which is going to be Hulk. And I'm surprised because I thought Hulk would be pretty easy to use based on how Hulk is usually implemented in other titles. But what's nifty here is Hulk actually has three forms, Hero Hulk, Monster Hulk, and Bruce Banner. And as Hero Hulk, he's got Heavy Blow, Swing Fist Forward to Punch Enemies, just a basic little combo there, but dealing substantial damage, as you can see. He's got Hulk Smash to unleash stored Gamma Energy, transforming from Hero Hulk into Monster Hulk. So this is going to be his main way to sort of power up, and we'll get to see those Monster Hulk abilities shortly. Uh, he also has his Indestructible Guard ability, which allows him to generate Gamma Shields for Hero Hulk and nearby allies, absorbing and converting damage into energy. So it absorbs it absorbs uh, damage for your allies, but it converts into Gamma for you. Radioactive Lockdown allows you to emit Gamma Energy to place enemies in Quantum Void that renders them immobilized and immune to all ability effects. Interesting. Um... One thing that I think is going to be really, not challenging, but there's a lot of verbiage in this game that is using words that are basically meaning something simpler, but they're putting the Marvel spin on it, which I'm glad. Like, we want them to make sure that this game is super Marvelized up. But, like, this Quantum Void thing, okay, like, we could just say that it's in, you know, like a, an AoE field that, whatever. Anyhow, uh, Incredible Leap is going to be his big ability to charge Leap and he can also knock a flying enemy to the ground. So this is a very apt counter to characters like Iron Man. I assume Spider-Man during a web swing as well. Uh, Gamma Burst is going to emit Gamma Rays to inflict damage. And then his Gamma Boost passive is going to allow him to team up with Iron Man or Doctor Strange to charge them with Gamma Radiation. When Doctor Strange uses his Maelstrom of Madness, he unleashes excess Gamma. When Iron Man uses Armor Overdrive, he will initiate a Gamma Upgrade. So it's going to power up both of them passively. As we see here. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, his suggested combo is going to be combining some Gamma Acquisition alongside some big attacks. So incredibly leap onto the battlefield, unleash Indestructible Guard to take the damage, and overpower enemies to Heavy Blow and Gamma Burst before becoming the monster with a Hulk Smash. So pretty nice that you do have those uh, Gamma fields to protect yourself after you leap into the fray. And we have two other forms for Hulk. Bruce Banner has a nice Gamma Ray Gun here, uh, which allows you to do, deal some range damage after dealing major damage with the monster form. Uh, he also has Puny Banner, which allows him to transform from Bruce Banner into Hero Hulk, allowing you to return back to more of your melee status. And then a Gamma Grenade on the left shift, which is going to inflict damage and knock enemies airborne. A little bit of a pushback effect there for Bruce Banner. Uh, Monster Hulk has a heavier blow, basically. A more destructive heavy blow that launches them upward and back, as well as dealing damage, unlike regular Hulk, Hero Hulk, who just inflicts damage. World Breaker that allows you to grab and smash the enemy in front, allowing us to grapple and pull our best Zangief impression here. Like that one a lot. A nice little animation on the attack. We've got Radioactive Lockdown. So he can emit Gamma Energy to inflict sustained damage and place enemies in that Quantum Void that renders them immobilized and immune to all ability effects. So Quantum Void is going to be carrying across characters. It's something that uh, will, I guess we will become very familiar with and multiple characters can do this. So we need to... Uh, we need to know what it does. Uh, he also has an incredible leap in his skill set as well, which is going to be quite similar uh, to the regular Hero Hulk. I don't know if it deals more damage. We're not getting specific numbers here, and it also doesn't show us taking someone down who's airborne. Same with the Gamma Burst. Is it going to be more damage? I'm sure it will be. That's the whole point of Monster Hulk. And Doctor Strange are going to be Interesting characters. Doctor Strange is our first three-star that we've got on the table. So Black Panther, Hulk, Loki, 
and Spider-Man are sort of your most difficult. And from here on out, now I'd say everybody's fair game to play from the start if you want to sort of respect their difficulty representation. He can cast his Daggers of Danak forward, dealing some range damage. He's got the Eye of Agamotto, which separates nearby enemy souls from their bodies. Damage dealt to these souls is transferred to their physical bodies. So, very interesting that it separates and then you can deal damage, I guess, not in not to the the same target kind of a, a weird ability here so check this out so he separates the bodies so, like the souls from the bodies the cast the eye but then as you see he's damaging the soul away from the body i'm not really sure what use this would have i guess it allows you to focus on a target that isn't focused on you perhaps then the damage is transferred follows up with a cloak of levitation to ascend and then enter a brief state of sustained flight so this is his big uh big traversal ability not a permanent flight thankfully we've got the maelstrom of magic will allow dr strange to release some build up dark magic to then deal damage to nearby enemies this is like a burst attack here okay so we are firing away we build up some dark magic and then we pop them back dr strange also has the pentagram of farala open portals between two locations enabling all units to travel through them so this is basically you know the magic ability but it's going to allow everybody to go through it so strange can go through it and anybody can go through it and that's a pretty darn nifty helpful ability shield of the seraphim creates a protective barrier that's pretty simple but a nice right uh, mouse trigger there i think dr strange actually looks like a very versatile and dependable character his passive is price of magic so this allows dark magic to accumulate with every hit on an enemy if dark magic is not released dr strange will enter a state of anti-heal so you got to make sure that you're using your maelstrom in order to not enter the state of anti-heal which sounds terrible his team up as you see is going to be a gamma maelstrom uh with the Incredible Hulk. We got to release that ability, release that dark magic so that we do not go in an anti-heal state. Hulk charges Doctor Strange and Iron Man with Gamma Radiation. Uh, so these, these team of abilities, as you can see, work one way. It's not like, okay, Hulk boosts Strange and then Strange boosts Hulk. It's like if they have a team of ability, it is one team of ability between the characters and it's, you know, it's the same ability. It's not going to go both ways. The suggested combo is to use the Shield of Seraphim to fend off damage, or Daggers of Denak to strike while building up Dark Magic. As the Dark Magic peaks, swoop in on enemies with a cloak, unleash the Maelstrom, and then with the Eye of Agamotto in hand, cast Pentagram of Ferala for a surprise attack while using the Eye of Agamotto to control enemies. So we know where the enemies are going to be. They cannot leave. Um, we're going to open up the Pentagram. What is this? Okay, so he's opening up the Pentagram. Oh, to get behind them, I guess. Okay, so let's see how this works. He's throwing the daggers. He's building dark magic. No, they didn't really show it very well there. Okay, but I do think Doctor Strange looks like a great character and probably one of my favorites thus far. Hela is another three-star difficulty. She's got that Night Sword Thorn. You're gonna throw those sword thorns, and it seems like they do some explosive damage after time. Goddess of Death allows her to soar into the sky and unleash crows from each hand at will. So a very cool first-person uh airstrike effectively i like this a lot i think her q ability is sick and the crows are going to play a major role in what can, she can do as you'll see by astral flock uh, allows her to torrance form into the flock of crows to glide forth and then press again to undo the transformation so this is her major traversal ability she can project into explosive hell sphere to stun nearby enemies with soul drainer um it seems like this is well let's see does it, does it i don't think it deals damage i think it's just a stun the astral flock soul drainer Show us the Soul Drainer again. Does damage get dealt? Okay, does do some damage, and it does group them together and stun them a bit, which is nice. Uh, we've got the Piercing Knight, which is to fire multiple Knight Sword Thorns that detonate after a delay. Okay, multiple. Nice. And then Nastron Crow Storm. Defeating an enemy will generate a Nastron Crow exploding after a duration. Um, and as we know, that is going to team up into... Uh, I believe Loki's team up ability as well. Uh, she can descend and fall slowly. I love the effects on her cape, like sort of the ethereal Hades, like dark magic style of her cape. Very cool. The hellish nature looks very good. I think this game is a very beautiful game. Um, yeah, when, so this is, again, when Hela lands a final hit, it's going to resurrect Loki or give him blue armor. Um, it is a one-way team up, not a two-way, as we've seen already before. Loki goes down, kill him, crow, Loki's back. Beautiful. 
The suggested combo here is to stun the enemy with a Soul Drainer, unleash a barrage with Night Sword and Thorn and Piercing Knight, slip into advantageous positions with Astral Flock, and deliver that devastating aerial assault. Okay, so we can fly away, and then we can go immediately into our uh, Goddess of Death and fire from above. I wonder if she's immune to damage, or like, what is her what is her dam her, her state of defense in that position? I'm guessing she's still in the battlefield because of the fact that like for this attack or for this combo, you know they're they're having her move out of the way. I'm guessing she's still vulnerable to damage during this. It, it shouldn't be like an immune state for her. Three-star characters still seem to have complexity though. Um, and so we'll move to our next, which is going to be Magic herself. Magic has a soul sword and two forms. So we'll get to the Dark Child form after all the abilities for Magic. She can slash forward with the soul sword. A very basic attack, um, as you can see here. No damage numbers, but it does look to be substantial, similar to Hulk's big punches. Now, Dark Child allows Magic to transform into Dark Child, gaining enhancements to all of her abilities, powering her up for uh, a monstrous form similar to Hulk in a way. Her stepping discs allow her to jump through a teleport uh, into the same direction of movement a short distance. So it's basically like Doctor Strange's thing, but just forward. It's not going to provide travel for others. It's just basically like a like a dash or like a, yeah, like a I guess like an invincible dash. Umbral Incursion dash forwards and launches an enemy upward. As you'll see, Magic does have good movement. It's more localized movement than like map-wide movement. Uh, but her Eldritch Whirl allows her to spin while swinging the Soul Sword after exiting a stepping disc. So instantly into this wide range attack that can take, uh, you know, take damage to multiple foes. Um, a good closer there with the stepping disc and then into the Eldritch Whirl. Magic Slash is straightforward with an Air Slash. Um, so this is going to be like a range slash that she can charge up from a distance. I can see you also using the stepping disc to get away and then uh, turning about face and instantly uh, unleashing a demon's rage. We've got her passive as Limbo's Might, which is going to allow her to summon a Limbo demon that attacks enemies after exiting a stepping disc. Now this is interesting to me. Um, it is going to sort of double up Magic's ability, but Typically, the role of summoning a different character is to distract from yourself, and while this will do it, we do have to use it after exiting a stepping disc. Therefore, we're going to be moving towards the enemy. I'm curious if we can use this to like sidestep the enemy and still launch the demon towards the enemy, uh, or if it has to be like all in moving towards the enemy, not so sure. The passive we got here is Limbo's Might, um, which is going to convert damage inflicted on enemies into bonus health, okay? So that's pretty nifty. Inflicting damage does give her more health. Her health bar is pretty slight for a more melee-driven character. Um, but as we'll see with her Dark Child abilities, uh, it's, a, it's a good counter to how much she can, she can dole out. Disc Master is again her one-way ability with Black Panther. To open that portal, it doesn't really benefit her at all. And this is something I'm a bit concerned about. I'll just pause here to say the abilities... The team-up abilities seem to really benefit one party more than the other. So that kind of... I don't know, like, how fun is it to be Hela and summon Loki versus, you know, being Loki and getting the freaking crow armor? Uh, how fun is it to be Black Panther running through Magic's portal or versus being Magic just opening the portal? I, I don't know. M maybe people who like playing support will enjoy executing the team-ups and people that enjoy playing more aggressive roles will enjoy taking advantage of the team-ups. In my head, team-ups were going to be more like more aggressive, but it does seem like the team-ups are instead going to be more support structure because they are one way. Now, the suggested combo here is to unleash stepping discs for a, switch, a swift dash, followed by a whirl slash with an umbral incursion to launch the target, then soul sword and melee attacks as a combo to take them down before casting stepping discs once again to make an exit. So we're gonna move forward here. We're gonna get the whirl immediately, launch upward, deal some damage, and then step disc away, which does seem like a smart move and a nice combo. Now, you'll notice here that our Dark Child has the same uh, attacks. They just deal more damage and they're dealing a powerful red magic as well uh, on top of the, the yellow magic. So the stepping disc gets us forward. As you know, the Umbral Incursion is going to launch an enemy upward. This is to get them aerial for a nice combo. We've got the Eldritch Whirl coming out of a stepping disc into a multi-target attack, a uh, forward AoE, if you will. And then we've got the Magic Slash, which is going to allow us to fire from range after a small charge-up timer. Charge up and unleash that arc. 
Uh, well, it's more of like a direct attack, not really an arc. Demon's Rage, Demon's Rage is going to summon that demon after exiting a stepping disc. Still curious if we can stepping disc away. Although, as you see, the Demon's Rage is far more angry with the Dark Child form. And then the passive uh, is still going to give her the bonus health, which is a great way to stay in Dark Child form. Uh, and maintain Magic's health if you can. All right, beautiful. On to Storm. I believe she's our last three-star character. Uh, in terms of difficulty, Windblade is going to launch forward piercing Windblades. I love Storm. I think Storm is going to be one of my first characters I dive into. Omega Hurricane transforms into a hurricane to draw nearby enemies and deal damage. Again, a nice like first person hurricane there to deal damage. Bring characters with you and towards you, right? Which is interesting. And then, well, they kind of, we killed them there. Uh, but we can't, you know, if these were normal heroes, we would not kill them. We would bring them towards us and then, like, allow magic in Dark Child form to slash or maybe allow Hulk to go ham. Weather Control is going to switch the weather to empower allies. Tornado grants a movement boost. Thunder grants a damage boost. So this is very interesting that we're able to impact the battlefield below. Storm kind of taking charge from above uh, with either movement speed or damage. The Goddess boost is going to channel the power of the weather to empower Storm herself. So now a Tornado grants a movement boost to me, Thunder grants a damage boost to me, and summons Lightning to inflict damage. So it's got a little bit of an extra buff onto Storm uh, with the extra Lightning. There's our movement, and then we've got the Lightning damage, which comes down from the sky against multiple targets, which I think is pretty sweet. I like her for being a good crowd control character. The Bolt Rush unleashes a Lightning Bolt forward. Not moving the character, though. Storm does not move. Um, she's got a pretty small set of moves because I think they are strong. So Storm being three stars, I'm not really sure why. She seems quite simple to me. I guess they're giving her the three star mark because of the fact that she has alternate attacks, right? She's got the, you know, the thunder and the tornado that you can alternate between that you have to pick between. I think she seems pretty easy to use and she's going to be one of the first characters I check out. Now, the suggested combo here is to grant the team damage boost or spews from above or enhance the weather effects with goddess boost for yourself. Then pierce distance ones with Windblade before sealing the deal with a Bolt Rush. So she's going to Windblade from afar, uh, and then she is going to deal that Bolt Rush here. Omega Hurricane, pretty darn sweet. Now on to Iron Man, a two-star difficulty. All right, he has his Propulsor Blast, which fires his Nanopulse Cannons forward. Boom, 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 boom. He also has his Unibeam for a more concentrated attack, and this is interesting because it's a character that is going to have a more ongoing attack uh, and provide, I think, a lot of damage. The Invincible Pulse Cannon fires a devastating Pulse Cannon in the targeted direction, delivering catastrophic damage to the targeted area upon impact, and that is one of the more impressive uh, ultimate abilities we have seen thus far. Hyper Velocity allows you to uh, shift forward into flight. Now, I don't think it's gonna, well, I don't know. It, it's, maybe we can fly permanently, because the other characters did say like a limited flight or a short flight or, you know, whatever. A drifting but this one just seems to be like boom they're just letting you letting you roll with it so i think it's going to be maybe maybe there's no limit on the uh well it does look like there's a recharge so there probably is a limit there's got to be he can't just fly, fly around the entire battle yeah that makes good sense armor overdrive allows you to enhance the damage of repulsor blast and unibeam strangely this doesn't increase his armor but i guess it's just the suit is going into overdrive um, so we will build some extra boosts for the Blast and for the uh, the Unibeam gets that super sick effect there. His Micro Missile Barrage is going to allow him to fire uh, a burst of Micro Missiles at a gallery of targets. Um, it is when Hyper Velocity or Armor Overdrive is used. So this Micro Missile Barrage cannot be used normally. It's used when we're flying or it's used in Armor Overdrive. And that'll be that missile bombardment that you actually just saw at the end of the armor overdrive ability. But, like, pretty cool that you can unleash those as you're flying. It's a great, like, get out of jail free card. I'm leaving. I'm going to, you know, leave you with a parting gift of some missiles. We know his gamma overdrive ability will allow him to combine with gamma radiation uh, to, thanks to Hulk, deal even more damage and quicker kills. The suggested combo for Iron Man is going to be... Uh, employing his Repulsor Blast to strike at enemies, Unibeam for massive damage on one, and then Hyper Velocity to gain vision and terrain advantage while activating your Mini Missile Barrage, Micro Missile Barrage, and your Armor Overdrive. He does seem like a very aggressive character and one that will be very fun to play, although per perhaps controlling his flight will you know, add a little difficulty. To me, I, I don't really see how Storm and Iron Man are that different in terms of difficulty, but they got Storm there. 
Um, Magic clearly has the second form. That's what puts her at three stars, but I think Storm should be two stars as well. Um, I do think Iron Man and Storm will be two of the more popular picks, especially in this first weekend of the game. We now move on to Luna Snow. Ice Queen herself, two-star difficulty, fire ice shots that damage da 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 damage enemies or heal allies. This has been a lot of verbiage going on 30 minutes here. Um, so this is similar to Loki in terms of being able to damage or heal. We've got Fate of Both Worlds, which is going to be our ultimate here. Take center stage and start dancing. Toggle between two performances, heal, or grant damage boost. Um, so you can maybe do both at the same time. Toggle between the performances. Yeah, so you can switch them as you're going for the damage buff or for the heals. That seems like a very powerful uh, support action, especially if your teammates, your team is all gathered around. Um, ice Shards, though, is going to fire Ice Shards for a short duration, damaging enemies or healing allies while restoring Luna's own health. So this is a ability to activate that will then allow us to heal ourselves. Seems to be something that Loki and her kind of share. Share the stage attaches an idle aura to an ally. Allies with idle aura also restore health when Luna Snow is healing others. So that's interesting. It's basically like a link. We're sending like a passive link between the idled character and those that we heal. Absolute Zero casts a clump of ice to freeze the hit enemy and restore our health, which is interesting. Uh, it's going to slow them down, deal a little bit of damage, and then heal us. Cryo Heart is the passive, which automatically restores health when casting Ice Arts or Absolute Zero, which is very nice. Um, and then we have a Smooth Skate passive, which allows us to basically sprint if we're moving forward for a, uh, a little bit of time. It basically turns into a sprint after uh, moving forward. So it allows her to clear space quickly. She does have this Icy Disco passive teaming up with uh, Namor, allowing Luna to infuse Ice Energy into Namor, who can then tap into the Ice Energy to power up his abilities. Doesn't look very powered up right now, but uh, it is. Icy Disco, you know, allows Namor. We'll get to him a little bit later. Uh, suggested combo is to unleash light and dark ice to damage enemies, heal allies, guard a vital ally with the share of the stage, and then boost healing or damage with ice arts and freeze enemies with absolute zero. Uh, she's also casting Fate of Both Worlds here. Um, I believe, right? Because, well, does ice arts? Yeah. Yeah, she's casting Fate of Both Worlds. They should have probably marked that in the suggested combo. Anyways, Luna doesn't look like the kind of character for me. Um, but I do think a lot of people will like her healing abilities, and that that ultimate fate of both worlds is actually pretty cool. Um, and I think the ability to boost damage or heal provides like a good push-pull. You can be defensive, you can be aggressive, depending on what your team needs and depending on what the match calls for, uh, which I do think is pretty, pretty beneficial. So we've got a few more two stars here. Uh, the Punisher has a surprising grapple hook, which I know you're going to love, but first it's his adjudication. Fire at enemies with his automatic rifle. Um, this is going to be a very... I mean, it, it looks like it deals a ton of damage. I'm a little surprised, honestly. Based on some of the damage we've seen, like, that looks like it's very powerful, but I guess you do have to maintain, uh, you know, direct contact. He's also got, also got Deliverance, which is going to be a shotgun for a more single-shot type attack, and it should also deal... Eh, it doesn't, I, I wonder if it can deal more AoE damage, but it doesn't seem like it, at least in the ability demo they're showing here. Final Judgment is going to be his ultimate, which allows Punisher to unleash two Gatling guns and missiles to attack enemies. This one does seem very powerful. And I like that he does bring in uh, the ability to target multiple foes finally, and just the Gatling guns look sick. He's got his Vantage Connection, which is going to be that grappling hook that I mentioned. Uh, allows him to move rapidly along the hook and is going to be his main traversal. But in case you like those Gatling guns, Punisher can summon a turret by deploying a culling turret that grounds Punisher while dealing massive damage. So Punisher is going to be in the turret. I really like these first person attacks. Hello with the Crows, Storm from above, Punisher in the turret. I think that's pretty sick. The Scourge Grenade is going to throw a smoke grenade forward to obscure enemy vision. It does do a tiny bit of damage, but really not much to squawk about. It's more about uh, keeping them out of the know, and you can probably use your vantage connection to get out when that happens. Warrior's Gaze is going to retain the vision of enemies that disappear from view for a short period of time. A nice passive there, I think. Very beneficial and makes... Oh, Punisher's only one star. I'm sorry. We're already into the one star characters. Infinite Punishment is going to be Rocket Raccoon with the Punisher. So Bradley Cooper will throw an ammo overload device in the target direction. Upon entering the device's range, Punisher receives buffs of infinite ammo and faster firing. So it's just going to be a nice boost to him to take out targets that are in the uh, 
ammo overload device range, but again, one way doesn't really benefit Rocket very much at all. The suggested combo is to utilize Deliverance at Judication and Culling Turret to strike enemies at various ranges. So we've got the turret, which seems to be uh, mid, mid range, right? So Adjudication is like long range, Culling Turret is mid range, Deliverance is short range, and then hold the high ground with your Vantage Connection and gain superior vision with Warrior's Gaze. Um, one star, I think, because these guns and people just know how to use uh, shooter characters in games like this. Sorry for saying he's two stars. He's actually one. Uh, there's not very many two star characters in the title, at least at launch. But Punisher is one, and so is Mantis, although Mantis is going to be far more helpful and passive than Punisher. Her life energy blast does fire an energy thorn and regains a life orb after a critical hit. Uh, so when we deal the crit, she will pull in some health, which is nice. Uh, release energy around her while moving is soul resurgence, providing healing over time and movement boost. So she's going to be more of a uh, an active booster, walking with you and having to move as you heal and boost. She can throw a spore to sedate the nearest enemy, throw them to sleep. Uh, doesn't really give full details on sleep, but I'm guessing it's going to be they can't move for a short period of time. That's Spore Slumber. Allied Inspiration consumes the life orbs to grant allies a damage boost. I will be able to heal with them as well, I believe. Natural Anger consumes life orbs to grant herself a damage boost. So we can make Mantis a little more powerful with her Energy Blast. And then we've got Healing Flower, which is going to... Mantis. Consume life orbs to grant allies healing over time. Uh, so that is pretty nifty if we want to throw them. It's heal over time versus a instant heal though, so keep that in mind. And then the passive being nature's favor um, is going to be receive a movement boost when not injured and healing over time when consuming life orbs. So, so you get a movement boost and heal over time when consuming life orbs. So the life orbs do heal yourself while also providing benefits to others. No team up at this time. Her suggested combo is to strategically use life energy to unleash healing flower to heal allies or unleash allied inspiration, natural anger to boost allies and self-inflicted damage. Use spore slumber to sedate enemies, disrupting their ability to cast and assist teams focus fire to eliminate them. So we're going to get in here, heal flower up. Uh, we're going to then inspire natural anger to get our own damage. Spore Slumber to Sedate, and then throw some Energy Balls to damage. Now, Rocket Raccoon is another one star with Bombard Mode to fire Energy Projectiles that deal damage. Very similar to Punisher's left click. And then his Repair Mode is going to shoot Bouncing Spheres to heal allies. I think Rocket Raccoon is actually going to be a very fun choice, given that he does seem to deal incredibly solid damage while also providing the heals. Um, and I think for me, at least, that's more fun than a straight-up Mage. Uh, sorry, straight-up Medic. I do like his ability to kind of do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. He also has his Cosmic Yarn Amplifier, which is an amazing name. He's going to deploy that CYA that grants allies a damage boost in the area, pop it out there. Um, this is like a weaker version of his eventual uh, team-up. Um, but he does have two team-ups, which I believe is the only character thus far to have two team-ups, which is very interesting. So Rocket has that on his side as well. He's useful with the Punisher and also useful with Groot. Now the Jetpack Dash is going to be a forward dash, but it is going to gain a little bit of aerial height. So it's not a fly, um, and it doesn't have the slow descent of Hela, but it can move us vertically and horizontally. BRB Battle Rebirth Beacon deploys a Rebirth Beacon that revives a fallen ally and periodically produces armor packs and rocket jet packs. So this is very nice. Going to give us some armor after revitalizing Punisher on the spot uh, and also can provide him with a jet pack. Now you can wall crawl uh, if you need to climb somewhere quickly or evade, get out of a battle, sticky situation. He does also have Flying Ace, which is going to be that slow fall, so you will need to jetpack dash into a Flying Ace uh, to basically be hella but furry. Old Friends allows Rocket Raccoon to ride Groot, receiving damage reduction. So it won't boost uh, either Groot or Rocket Raccoon, but it does reduce the damage to Rocket and in a way boost the damage to Groot because they both can work together. Ammo Invention, as we know, allows him to throw that AOD and boost the Punisher's uh, infinite ammo and faster firing, which seems to be very, very valuable. And then the suggested combo is to zip around with your jetpack dash, use repair mode to continuously heal your team, and deploy a BRB for swift ally revival. So he is more focused on the support. 
But I do feel like his gun and his Groot ability do allow him to provide more of a aggressive offensive, uh, an offensive position as compared to maybe Mantis uh, or Luna, who seem to be much more defensive. Now Groot is going to be a one star, easy to use, just tank it up. He's got Vine Strike to launch vines to attack these enemies, um, which is going to be ranged, but you, know, you have to be in range. Strangling Prison will be his ultimate, allowing him to fire a massive vine cluster that pulls nearby enemies to his center and imprisons them. That's damage and stun. Very nice. Uh, he's got this Thorn Lash Wall here, which targets a location and grows a Thorn Lash Wall. When awakened, it strikes enemies attacked by Groot and his allies. So it's important to note that this is, again, sort of like Black Panther's Vibranium target in sport, sort of like Spider-Man's Spider Tracer. Um, the wall looks nice, but when you activate it, it will strike the enemies that are attacked by Groot and his allies. So it's less direct than the Tracer and the Vibranium, but it is still like, I mean, I guess it's hard to tell. I believe this probably just attacks anyone in the area, but the wording does make it sort of seem like you do have to be already attacking them. Like we attack them, then they're awakened, and then they start to attack as well. Uh, we've got the Ironwood Wall, which is to grant bonus health to Groot when nearby enemies take damage. So that's interesting. So the Ironwood Wall will awaken. Um, so as we deal damage, we get health back. A great perk for a tank. Um, and as you can see, it's kind of giving him bonus health to uh, even reach beyond his normal health bar. We've got Spore Bomb here, which is throw an explosive Spore Bomb that splits into multiple small explosive spores and deals some damage, uh, kind of just like a little bit more of an AoE, but from range. Flora Colossus is his passive. Wooden walls near Groot will awaken, activating extra effect, so while near them. So this is what makes me think that you do need to already be attacking the enemies for Thorn Lash Wall to also participate and co-op with you. But these walls will not activate when Groot's away. Groot does need to stay in the fray, as expected of a tank. Can't run away and just let the walls do the work for you. Um, but he does have his Iron Wall, Iron Wood Wall, and his Thorn Lash Wall for damage on the enemies and heals on yourself. Friendly Shoulder is what we're going to give Groot uh, to boost Rocket Raccoon effectively. We do, you know, have then two people dealing damage, and in a way, this one boosts Rock. I mean, Groot because Rocket probably draws some of the fire away from Groot. Rocket being a squishier target, you want to take him out first, I believe. So I guess that one is kind of beneficial to Groot, but not really. Uh, the suggested combo is to use wooden walls to split the battlefield and shield damage and deploy Thorn Lash Wall to tactically reshape the terrain, trap enemies with Strangling Prison, then wipe them out with a devastating combo of Spore Bomb and Vine Strike. Okay, so we're putting down the walls to really... Oh, wow, you can climb the walls. Wow, you see that? Shield damage, split the battlefield, and then deploy Thorn Lash Wall to tactically reshape the terrain trap enemies with strangling prison and then wipe them out with a devastating combo of spore bomb and vine streak that's one of the nicest combos i've seen and uh that is freaking serene and freaking supreme that is every ability in the alpha for marvel rivals you have now seen them all you know the characters we've gone over them in extensive detail and you can figure out who you want to play first who you're going to target this game is going to be awesome. Like I said, I hopefully will be able to provide more codes to all of you. In the meantime, though, let me know who you're starting off as in Marvel Rivals. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more gameplay and in-depth guides. And until next time, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Drink some hot chocolate, and we will see you all later.